Hi, Sam. In this video, we will go to the nitty gritties of calculating the p values, or called calculated probability values, one of the very important uh, statistics in hypothesis testing. Uh, in the statistical inference interactive workshop. Yeah. Let's go to the our studio. P value selection 11. Okay, we have some necessary uh, variable being loaded into it, into the working space. Okay, we'll discuss p values now, which have nothing to do with the Okay. Instead, there are most common measures of statistical significance. Now, the test of mean, test of variance, the models difference, uh, significance of the coefficient in the linear regression models. Okay, hi, because they are popular, they are used a lot and often they are misused and misrepresented. How to interpret them correctly? Okay, non hypothesis and alternative hypothesis we have covered in the previous uh, section. And uh, for example, it's me. How unusual or extreme is the samples value we get from our data? If it's very extreme, rare event, it goes to the 5% of chance appearing, and we tend to doubt it. Okay, it seems unlikely to happen. Okay, that's the hypothesis testing. Is our test statistics consist with our excuse consist with our hypothesis? So they are implicitly three steps we have to take to answer these type of questions. Okay, what will be the first step? How to basically how to calculate the p value based on the, our experience in hypothesis testing, right? So the first step is compare the test stats to the Z or T quantile. Now we haven't have the statistic T test statistics, T test statistics. Uh, so calculate the test statistic from the data. Yeah, likely. Consult your crystal ball. Yeah, that will be the last result. Uh, create a null hypothesis. Oh, I think. Creating a null hypothesis is important. Right? That's the first step. You have to create a null hypothesis. Equal, not equal, etc. But generally, null hypothesis is status quo. Nothing has changed. No change. Good old days. Every oh, live in the good old days. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so begin with a null hypothesis, which uh, reason, reason the guess or educate the guess has some distribution of data summary. The baseline against which will match the alternative hypothesis, right? We have seen this. Next, what do you suppose? So you suppose in non hypothesis, what is the next step? Next step, no? Next, we reject. Oh, that's straightforward. <laughs> Without any testing, then we reject. Go back to the crystal ball. Yeah. <laughs> Compare the test statistic to A, Z, or T test. But calculate it first. Right? We need to calculate the test statistics first, then translate the test statistic into a p-value. Okay, test statistic, you get the data, what is the final step, right? Final step. We already calculated. Now you have the proposal from your reason hypothesis test is computed from your gathered data, what is the final step? Compare the test statistics to the hypothetical distribution or the threshold. Say whether how far is 0 0.05 or 0 0.25 or 0. Point whatever. Then we calculate the Z score or the corresponding test statistics to compare. Okay. Your comparison tells you how extreme the test value is towards the alternative hypothesis. How extreme, how extreme. The p-value is a probability under the null hypothesis of obtaining evidence 
as more extreme than your test statistics. Uh, more extreme. Obtain from your observed data which you have sample data in the direction of the alternative hypothesis. So p value is say 0 0.05. If your value, your calculated test statistic is towards the extreme side of 0 0.05, the chance to happen is very small. Then we have reasonable ground to reject the hypothesis and to accept the alternative because it's very rare to appear in the current uh, H0 now hypothesis. Current hypothesis is very rare to happen, less than 5% chance, so it's unlikely to happen. So we accept that the alternative will turn to the alternative. If so, the p-value probability of seeing your test that it is small, then one of the two things happen. Okay, it's very comprehensive. Either H0 is true, you have committed a, a, or observed a rare event, and this is an unusual test that is and or H0 is false. Let's go through an example. Yeah. When H0 is true and we reject it, what is this type of error? This is type 1 error, false positive type 1 error. So this is the error, or we are not making an error. It's really rare, it's not possible for the hypothesis 0 to happen, now hypothesis, hypothesis to happen, then we reject it. So either we make a mistake or we are right. When we are right, we reject the now hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Well, I'm repeating too much, too many times. So suppose that you get a t-statistic of 2.5 with 15 as the degree of freedom. Okay, mu equal to mu versus the alternative. Blah blah blah. Do we want to find a probability of getting a t-statistic as large as 2.5? A t-statistics 2.5 with 15 degree. Okay, we want to get it like than that. R can help us. We use our trim PT uh, probability. Lower tail is false. Now, this function returns one of the two probabilities. Either the probability of x greater than p, lower tail is false, or x smaller than q, uh, on top, lower tail is true. So lower tail is on the left side. If lower tail is true, we calculate the left side of the 5% or 2.5%. Then if the lower tail is false, we look at the uh, right side, right side. Okay, so the right side is x greater than the quantile. So it's greater and it's on the on the positive side of zero. The right side is positive, so x greater than a quantile with that particular probability so two tails so, so right side is lower tail equal to false right side is lower tail so left side is called lower tail and the right side is actually higher tail higher value okay we set q equal to this pt yeah? pt probability t again we use pt to find the T distribution, student distribution. Yeah, I have to correct it. Student T distribution, not normal or standard T distribution. Students, example. And uh, P binomial. Binomial. So this is the way to find a binomial distribution. In the previous session, uh, we didn't manage to find it because we forgot to type the P, P for the binomial. So now I'll show you. We want to get how to get the documentation for different uh, distributions. Okay, we use PT. Go back to the business. PT. Our lower tail. I forgot to specify the lower tail. Lower tail equal to false. So we are comparing the alternative hypothesis, which is the mu greater than mu zero, x greater than a quantile, and lower tail need to be set to the false. Okay, probability having that is 0 0.01, around 1%. The result tells us H0 were true. 
if h0 were true, we would see this larger a test statistic with a probability 1% or lower. So this very large test statistic of 2.5 is considered as a rare, some kind of rare events. It will have only 1% chance under the norm student's t distribution. Not normal distribution, particular distribution, t distribution. What shall we do? Reject H0. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. Why did we de reject? Find a quantile associated with this test. Okay. Set that new equal dot. Assume we use a C test, we reject the one side test when alpha is set to 0 0.05. Why do we reject quantile associate? No. Use quantile. <clears throat> It's 1.64. We reject because our data, our test statistics is 2. F2 is greater than 1.64. So it's in a rejection zone, zone of rejection, 5% zone of rejection. Shaded portion of this figure because it's exceeded the quantile. <coughs> Ninety nine percent is two point three two. So ninety five percentile is this range plus minus one point six four standard deviation. Then ninety nine is plus minus two point three two, right? It's large, right? It's large. And when you extend the confidence interval, the T test, the test no, the test statistic two is under this region. Right? Under this region, under this 99% percent region. So reject, no, reject, no, no, reject. We accept. So again, I picture words of thousands word. Okay, where is the picture? You should have seen this. Okay, okay, okay. You should have seen this. <clears throat> so this is. 2.32. This is 2.32, and 2 is smaller than that. 2 is smaller than that. Let's go back to the previous one. The previous one. The previous one. This is 1.64, uh, 95 percentile. So this 2 is greater than that under the within the rejection zone. But when we extend to 99 percent, 99 percent confidence then 2 is actually within this larger gray area. This is the area that we accept the null hypothesis. Okay. Probability null is 97. So this line is this area is 97.72499 and this is 1 minus that P02. Now let's find a p value associated with the example. Okay, let's interpret the result. P norm lower tail equal to force. This is 2% chance. <clears throat> 2%. That's how significant about 2%. So basically, this value plus this value will be 1. Will be one. Yes. We are providing the same statistics, number 2. Number two. So add them together should be equal to 100%. <clears throat> 
So it says p value is a universal uh, statistics uh, to compare instead of specifying alpha like value or non uh, alpha value under different distribution where you will get different quantile. While p value calculated probability will be comparable when you are having different, you are comparing uh, statistical in different distributions. For two sided hypothesis test, you have to double the smaller to one sided p value. We will see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's move. So this again, we see that uh, seven out of eight girls uh, using binomial binomial distribution. <clears throat> Six sides eight probability zero point five lower tail equal to false. So. So show the probability of having at least seven girls out of eight. At least seven girls out of eight. When we are using the probability function of the binomial, we state the first value at six. That means it's greater than six. Greater than six means at least seven girls. So that's the uh, uh, requirement by these uh, p binomial function, so you will get this probability value here. Get this probability, which is at least seven girls right? out of eight children. Is yes, this okay? We see a probability of zero point three reject or fail <clears throat> to reject. We will reject so. It's only 3% chance, and our tolerance rate ratio is 5%. So we reject. We see a probability of blah blah blah. So we reject or fail to reject our five equal to 0 0.04. Still reject. Still reject. 0 0.03, and probably we fail to reject. Fail to reject. Okay. For the other side of the test, we want the expand sample size of them. So tail equal to true. This is this means that uh, what is the probability to have less or equal to seven girls when I have eight child uh, when I have eight, eight children? So it's on the left side, so less side or equal to seven. Nah. So this is a <clears throat> binomial. Binomial is a discrete distribution. It's more suitable in this situation because when we born in kid, it can be either boy or girl. So there is no continuous gender in between boy and girl. So it's a <laughs> discrete uh, outcome. So it's pretty likely probably that about eight children that have at most seven girls. So it's very likely, most likely I will get uh, Less than seven, less or equal to seven girls. You know, one girl, two girls, zero girls, and three, four, five. The probability of these two sided test is two times the smaller of the one side. In this case, lower value is 0 0.03. So times two, the p value is the p value for the two sided test. test. So 0 0.07. Mm. Now a final example using a Poisson distribution. So remember that this is discrete and involves counts or rates of counts. So the example from slide OK is a hospital infection in a hospital. 
Suppose that a hospital has an infection rate of 10 infections per 100 person days. Yeah, person days. There are also times at risk. This is rate of 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Assume that an infection rate of 0 0.05 is the benchmark. Benchmark. Uh, higher than that, we say, oh, the risk is increasing. And lower than that, I say, okay, I think it's fine. So this is our alpha value, 2.05. Recognize it with this model, could the observed rate of 0 0.1 be larger than the benchmark 0 0.05 by chance, or it is indeed a problem? So the mean time. So we have to look at the sample size. Sample size. In other words, H0 says lambda equal to 0 0.05. So lambda 0 times 100 equal to 5. And the HA says, OK, we should uh, look at lambda greater than 0, 0 0.05. Lambda is the calculated mean for the poison distribution. Well, all this rate is just if or should we reject? And before I have a handy function which returns the probability of poison distribution that I want the variable to see at least nine infections using a lambda value of five or lower take. Greater than the argument. The poison distribution provide a lambda uh, non negative means. Lambda okay. okay, let's have a interpretation on the result. We see this, right? This probability is lesser than 3%. So should we reject or accept? That means we should reject. So let's go back a little bit to interpret more. So the probability of seeing at least nine infections, at least nine infections, because we have uh, how many? 10 infections, at least greater or equal to nine infections. And uh, in order to use this uh, probability of poison, we need to provide a lambda. The lambda value equals to the 5. 5 is calculated based on the threshold times the number of persons over time. So the events over time. So that is the how to calculate it. So we put I'm fine. The lower tail equal to force, so we are looking at the right side. So we are comparing that the sample's uh, infection rate is greater than the threshold or not. Okay, so that is the calculation. Okay. So again, poison in 9 is greater than 9, so we have 10 people, 10 people here, right? And uh, the threshold is 0 0.05, we are comparing with. So the chance is actually 0.033%. So getting 10 events, 10 infections for this sample size over time, the chance is 0 0.03. We compare the 9 with the mean value. The mean value in this poison distribution is the benchmark times the number of events over time. So this is 5. So we will expect around 5. But now we are seeing 9 to 10, 10 events. So it's 10 consists significantly different from 5 or not. It is quite different, so it's only 3% chance that we will observe 10 infections. Fail to reject. 
No, no, no. It should be reject. Should reject. Uh, should reject. So we reject the infection rate hypothesis uh, hypothesized at h0 since the data favors the h rate, the calculated probability is very small. Indicate that the current rate 10 infections for 100 people per day uh, is uh, is very significant. Uh, it's very significant. 10 infections per is significant. Okay, so this is the nitty gritty of calculating the p value, so one tailed, two tailed, and then lower tail equal to uh, true, lower tail equal to false. Right? So, this is how p value are calculated. So, luckily, we have a lot of test, uh, f test that uh, we can use. But this session has helped us to understand a deeper about the probability especially when you're looking at this graph to first form in hypothesis, find a threshold, whether it's 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.1, etc. Then a graph can be drawn to indicate where are those shaded areas for rejection, what are the areas is not for rejection. Then we compare with the sample statistics a statistic that we calculate and see whether the statistic fails into falls into the rejection zone or not falls into the rejection zone. Then we decide whether we accept the non hypothesis or reject the non hypothesis. Okay, so that's the end of this session. Yeah. Thank you for being with me. See you next time.